Welcome back to this daily devotional today. We are continuing our study through the Gospel of John and the life of Jesus. We are at that critical moment right now where where it's sometimes called the passion of Christ. It was his passion, his love for you and me that drove him through this extremely um, difficult moment where he would become sin to die in our place as a sacrifice. Before we jump in to see uh, Pilate's testimony of Jesus, let us make sure our hearts are in the right place by having a time of confession and prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, we, we thank you so much for Jesus' sacrifice for us, that he became our sin so that we could be free. Lord Jesus, we lift up our sins and confess our failings to you now. Lord Jesus, we praise you that in Christ we can be forgiven and be cleansed from all unrighteousness. Lord, help us to walk in a manner worthy of your son Jesus and his gospel. Lord, open our eyes to what you have to teach us this morning and give us that strength to walk in it. We pray these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. We're picking up in John chapter 19. So good to have you with us for this. We're picking up in verse 7. Jesus is before Pontius Pilate. He is the governor, and uh, the Jews are saying, we want you to execute him for us because we're not allowed to do that. And Pilate wants to release him because he doesn't see that he's guilty. Verse 7, we have a law, the Jews replied to him, and according to that law, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. He's saying he's the son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was more afraid than ever. He went back into the headquarters and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus did not give him an answer. So Pilate said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Don't you know that I have the authority to release you and the authority to crucify you? You would have no authority over me at all, Jesus answered him. If it hadn't been given to you from above, this is why the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. From that moment, Pilate kept trying to release him. But the Jews shouted, if you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Anyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So, He already determined that he was quite convinced that Jesus was innocent and tries to release him. So when he brings him out and they start uh, shouting, crucify, crucify, um, Pilate um, says, you know, you do with him what you want, but I I don't want to have any part in this. And then the Jews say, he claims to be the son of God. Now, it's an interesting statement because, you know, if you're walking down the street and you meet somebody and and then someone's like, they claim to be the son of God, you'd be like, yeah, okay, whatever, sure, whatever. I mean, you wouldn't take it seriously, right? The fact that Pilate takes this seriously is kind of like he knew. He had spent enough time with Jesus that he knew there was something different about Jesus. So the Jews say that Jesus blasphemed if he wasn't God. He claimed to be the Son of God. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do that. I'm not allowed to do that because we're not the Son of God. We can't make ourselves equal to God. That is blasphemy. So they were right. He's claiming to be God. And that's not right if he's not God. But what they didn't take into consideration was the fact that he was God. And even though the Jews couldn't see it, it's interesting that 
pilot could. He goes back to the headquarters and says, where are you from? Why didn't the Jews ask that question, right? Uh, the Jews already knew all the answers. That's the whole thing is that they didn't like that Jesus was coming with questions. Every time Jesus came with questions, they didn't like that because they had all the answers. You think that, you know, if you have all the answers, it's okay for people to ask questions, but that's not how it works. They have the questions uh, that they want asked so that they can give the proper answers. They think that through their righteousness, through their being better than other people, they earn God's favor. This idea that sinners, that the dredges of society could become right with God kind of makes all their hard work to be nothing. But Pilate, he realized that Jesus was more. He was something. Not only was he innocent, but potentially, potentially a god. Now, Pilate's not a God-fearing man. He was probably uh, worshiping all sorts of uh, Roman gods, Greek gods, whatever. So was he thinking that Jesus was kind of like a Her Hercules or something? A kind of a, a literal offspring of a god. He seems to be concerned enough that he's asking the question, where are you from? He claimed to be God, but Jesus was God. Then Pilate's testimony was that he thought that Jesus possibly was God, or a God. So even, even though Pilate didn't believe, he, he had seen enough. And we can see so very much and still not believe. Like, it can be staring us in the face, and we might not be able to see it. And the reason for that is faith is not just a mental thing. It is a surrender thing. Faith, you can believe that if you jump out of the airplane with a parachute, you'll be safe. Like, you can know it's the fact. You know it's safe. But until you're willing to jump out of the airplane, it's not faith. You see? It's not true faith. It's not belief. It's not trust. Our faith that moves us to action, we must take action on it, or else it's not faith. Pilate knew something was up, but he had a choice to make. Verses 10 through 12. We saw that... Um, Jesus doesn't answer him, and, and he doesn't like that. Pilate doesn't like this at all. Don't you know who I am? you got to love that phrase, right? Don't you know who I am? That's basically what Pilate says. Don't you know that I, I have the power over this, over your life? I can do so very much. And Jesus is like, yeah, I know you can kill me because my father gave you that authority. Ooh. Ooh. Pilate doesn't like that at all. And when he realizes that basically Jesus is applying, implying that he gave Pilate the authority to kill him, which is an interesting... We know that Jesus was the one who laid down his life. He wasn't murdered in the... I mean, he was murdered, but... It wasn't like it took Jesus off guard. Jesus intentionally laid down his life. He could have not gone to the cross. It was within Jesus' authority to revoke Pilate's authority at any moment. And yet, Pilate's like, don't you know who I am? And Jesus is like, you clearly don't know who I am. And this freaks Pilate out. Because Pilate, though he doesn't believe in, in, in God, doesn't believe in Jesus, he knows enough. 
that he's in a bad situation. The problem is he then has to choose, does he fear Jesus more? Does he fear God? Or does he fear the crowd? And the crowd says, oh, well, you must be a traitor then because he's making himself out to be king and, you know, you're a traitor against Caesar because anyone claiming to be a king is, you know, needs to be put to death or else you're a traitor. He chooses that he fears the crowd. He fears Caesar more than he fears God. And that's where we see this. From that moment, Pilate kept trying to release him, but the Jews shouted, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Anyone who makes himself king uh, opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside, sat down on the judge's seat in a place called the Stone Pavement, but an Aramaic Gabbatha. It was the preparation day for the Passover, and it was about noon. Then he told the Jews, Here is your king. They shouted, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Should I crucify your king? I don't think he's just trying to get out of this. I think he realizes that Jesus is something greater. Just as the chief priest did not seem to know what he was saying when he said, one man must die for the many. They said, we have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Then he handed him over to be crucified. He, he, he knew, he knew there was something about Jesus. But he chose to fear the crowd. He chose to fear Caesar. And he submitted himself to the mercy of the crowd instead of to the mercy of God. I beg of you, if you know in your head that Jesus is true, that Christianity is true, that God has made a way for your forgiveness of your sins, but yet you have not surrendered your life to him, you still fear the crowd too much. You still fear the approval of that person too much. You fear something. You fear the loss of your control. I beg of you to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Perhaps you know other people who are in that place where they kind of know that Jesus is the way, but they just won't give up their life. They don't want to lose control. They don't want be a Christian. They don't want. They have excuses. Yeah, yeah, they know. I'll deal with that later, they say. Pilate chose the crowd. And many people choose the crowd, even when they know the truth, or they know some semblance of the truth. Don't be like those people. And warn anyone you know that has it in their head but not in their heart. Because salvation is for those who choose to believe, who dedicate themselves to Him. That's what baptism is all about. We identify with Him. We share publicly that we are His. Well, let me pray a prayer of blessing over you for this day. Lord God, I pray that you bless each person watching this video today. That you fill them with your Holy Spirit today. That if anyone is still knowing the truth, but not having acted on it, not having known you, Lord, that they would step out in faith upon your, your grace, your forgiveness. Lord, that they would pray today, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Take away my sin and take away this heart. Because, Lord, we, we desperately need you. We can't, we can't change without you. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you have questions about salvation, 
please don't hesitate to uh, shoot me an email at boldfaithbible uh, at gmail.com uh, or pop it in the comments down below. Email is uh, a little more dependable, but uh, um, we can definitely uh, chat with you about that. If you have any questions about whether you are saved, um, we can talk about that too. But uh, make sure that you know where you stand. Make sure that you have chosen Jesus and not the crowd. All right, folks, if you have a chance to check out some other Bible studies, there's some here on the screen. Otherwise, I will see you later. God bless you all.